Powerplay Chess, brought to you in association with Kagi. Black to play and win. Be careful, there's a little trick in here. Black to play and win. So this is a position from the game between international master Aaron Jacobson, who I believe is from the United States, and Jordan van Forest from the Netherlands, who is former winner of the Tata Steel tournament and uh, second for Magnus Carlsen, seriously strong grandmaster. What I'd like to do is, before I actually give you the solution, I'd like to go back to the very beginning of this game because I think it's a very interesting Queen's Gambit. Uh, as many of you will know, I love the Queen's Gambit declined with black. And Van Forest plays, I think, a really interesting idea in this opening. So let's have a look at this game. Um, I'll zip through fairly quickly, but I just thought it's a very interesting opening idea. So let's check it out. Now, you can get into the Queen's Gambit declined with various routes, but Bishop e7, of course, is a normal move here. But Van Forest plays Knight d7 which is quite flexible. It means you might still play bishop b4. Um, you might transpose to a Slav. You might go into a queen's gambit declined, which is what happens after bishop g5. And then bishop e7. So this is actually you know, a very old line. And you can play with b6 if you want to. I mean, black can do this in various ways, but Van Forest plays castles. And then just go c6. So this is quite um, uh, an old-fashioned way of playing for black. But old-fashioned doesn't mean bad at all. a3. So what white is doing here, I know that I often criticise these little pawn moves at the side of the board... But this is called the battle of the tempo. Basically, a3 could be a useful move for white. Later on, expanding with b4, it covers the b4 square as well. But really, I mean, white wants to be able to play the bishop out here, but doesn't want to lose a tempo after d takes c4. So with a3, you're playing a useful move and hoping that black is going to take here, and in that way you've gained a tempo. Now, a, a normal way of playing this position for black would be b6 here, and bishop b7. That's quite possible. But this is a really interesting moment, and Van Forest plays what to my eyes is, is a rather unusual move. He plays knight e8, so it looks like a very strange retreat. But there's point to it. So if, for example, bishop g3, then knight d6. So the knight puts some pressure on c4. And if that advances, then the knight can hop to f5. That's quite nice. Attacking that bishop. Or if c takes d5, then, well, black is sort of quite happy to have that exchange and this knight as is so often the case stands very well on the d6 square with this particular pawn structure looking at these key squares now after knight e8 in, in this game uh, Jacobson exchanged bishops very often this exchange is desirable for black in the Queen's Gambit declined because it just gives black a little bit more space and once again the knight comes to d6 which sort of forces white to make a decision with this pawn and again exchanging could mean this knight stands very well here so Jacobson decides to push and that forces the knight back However, now that the pressure is off d5, that means that black is able to make this break with e5. There's an exchange here. 
And you can see that uh, in spite of all these, the, the toing and froing with this knight, in fact, Black has managed to free his position really well and has this very nice central pawn chain. And yeah, I mentioned that the exchange of dark squared bishops is often desirable for black. And one of the reasons is that, yes, it gives the queen uh, more activity on the dark squares. And it means that black can connect the rooks very easily. So I think by this stage, so we're out of the opening now, I think black has, well, certainly equalized very easily. Black has very free play here. Because you've got a lovely center pawn d5 that gives black some space. So the game went like this. And now it's possible for black to start some initiative, start an attack on the king side. So threat bishop g4. You can see that queen is not as well placed as black's. The space advantage means that black has been able to switch the pieces to the king side. Notably, the queen. A check, and the knight came back to e5. Black would very much like to play g5, but you have to be very careful. g3 would actually trap black's queen. So that's why the queen came back. Okay, that's a pretty good spot for the queen on d4. However, watch what happens. Bishop b4, I mean, this, this is beautiful. Black's pieces are really well placed. And knight f3, so this exchanges off that crucial white squared bishop, and now this, well, what an attacking piece controlling all those beautiful light squares. And now the rook comes into e4, pushing the queen back from its excellent post in the middle. Now rook number two comes sweeping over. I mean, this would be terrifying to defend against. All kinds of things are cropping up in this position. Rook h4. Oh, this looks nasty. And the knight came back to f4. And that is the position that I'd like you to look at. So it's black to play and win. We finally reached our puzzle position again. So how did Van Forest finish off the game from here? There is a very tempting move, and that is rook takes pawn check. Because if king takes, then queen h5 will force mate. And if knight takes, then queen h5, threatening queen takes knight and rook h5, looks incredibly powerful. However, white has a defense. I hope you spotted this. Queen d4. And the position isn't so clear. In fact, after this, well, the point is that the queen can interpose. In fact, if we just go back, instead of sacking the queen, if black plays bishop g4, then white can only survive by playing a couple of tricky moves, rook h1. I think black has tremendous compensation for the exchange in this position because... This light, this light square bishop can hop back here. So I think that's certainly not a bad way of playing. It just so happens there is a way to force an immediate win, and that's with queen takes f4. And in fact, white resigned here. So if g takes f4, then rook h5, and after that, mate follows shortly. And if e takes f4, then we're back to this one again. King to h3, rook h5. Or king back to g1 and rook h1 mate. So, yeah, queen takes f4, forced immediate resignation. But yes, you ha just had to avoid the trick of rook takes h3 straight away. Anyway, very nice finish, but also I think a really interesting opening idea, 98 bouncing round to d6. If you want to see that whole game again, do check out the link to chesspuzzle.net.